I asked on Instagram, and also I've just been getting a lot of comments about my experience competing so far. I don't know, stuff I've been doing, there's my cat, this is just how it is. <laughs> and you guys did have a lot of questions for me, and I wanted to just talk in general um, about my experience competing. In the beginning of January this year, 2015, um, I wanted to compete again, which was at the end of last year, I was like, I don't think I'm ever gonna do it. Like, maybe I will, but I don't know. And then in January of this year, I was like, I wanna do it. Like, let's just go for it. Um, so I hired the same coach and it has been since I think January 16th, I wanna say, and now it is 10 days out from my show. And uh, I just wanted to talk about how this time around was completely different than last time for me. Um, still a little bit of the same struggles, but it was just my mindset was different. Um, I was a lot mentally healthier and I was a lot more confident in myself. And I think I went through a really big mental transformation at the end of last prep. My experience this time has just been completely different. So to talk about competing in general, the first thing I want to mention is that it will be extremely isolating. Um, I kind of feel like I've been a little bit distanced from my family and some of my friends while in prep because um, first of all, they don't understand it a lot of times. Like my family is supportive um, and my friends, most of my friends are supportive. I'm very lucky in that sense. I don't have anybody telling me like, this is stupid, you shouldn't do it. Um, but I think um, a lot of them don't understand why I'm doing it. To them, they see it, they're like, wait, so you're dieting down ridiculously to get in a bikini and walk on stage? Like, that's stupid. Um, not realizing that that's just not at all what it's about for me. I mean, honestly, it, it's about so much more than that. I mean, I've told my coach before and I've told my husband, like, I wish that there was some other way to end all of this without getting on stage and flaunting my body um, in front of people. Like, I don't know. Uh, there was something else that would be cool. Just know why you want to do it and let that be enough. You know, hopefully you have like a, a boyfriend or a girlfriend or a spouse or a best friend or somebody in the world who understands what you're going through and can kind of cheer you on and be like, do your thing, man. And if you don't, you have me. I heard a quote somewhere that says, the more that you're okay with what you're doing, the less you need others to be okay with it. And I think that it's very important before you compete to come to terms with that. Also with competing, so like I said, it's been 18 weeks now and um, my diet has been kind of all over the place. Starting out, I was just a consistent every day, the same macros. And then I think maybe about 10 weeks in, we switched to carb cycling where I had two lower carb days and a high carb day. Um, and I loved that. I don't know, man. I like love low carb diets, but I just liked, um, having like the two days a week that I had a high carb day so that I could get like the high carb things that I wanted like oatmeal or pasta or whatever and then go right back into low carb the next day um I wish I could live my life like that I just feel like it would be obnoxious after a while overall how I've been feeling in terms of food and and stuff like that my relationship with food was has always been a weird one ever since I started dieting in 2011 I think or 2010 that's when I first like really started dieting and then I got really serious about dieting in 2012 and I feel like I've been on some diet since 2012. Um, so it's very tiring. And being in restriction mode for that long, I really feel like it messes with you. And if you have done a show or know what I'm talking about, you've been dieting for some amount of time, you can go from having like a healthy relationship with food to a not healthy relationship with food. And I truly believe the mind is not meant to be restricted from food for that long. Because you know, it's not like, it's not like, cutting out cigarettes or, or cutting out alcohol. You don't need those to live. Like you can just cold turkey cut them out and they're not a part of your life anymore and you get used to it. But with food, you have to have some. And so it, it it's a gray area thing. There's no black and white, either I'm gonna eat everything in sight or I'm gonna eat nothing. You gotta come to the middle ground. And I know as humans, gray areas are hard for humans. We like black and white, it's just easier. Um, so it, <laughs> Last year was much more of a struggle when it comes to the food stuff. Like I said, I went through some uh, therapy about really just focusing on my anxiety around food and it just, I don't know what exactly it did for me. I know she did, um, she had me practice a lot of exposure therapy where um, it used to be like if I had a perfect day of eating and then I would have something off my plan, it would just open the door for craziness where I would eat everything in sight and it was like I could not stop. Like if I went off my plan, I was gonna go hard off my plan. There was no such thing as like, oh, I had an extra scoop of peanut butter 
and then that's all I do. Like, no, if I have an extra scoop of peanut butter, now we're going out for cheesecake because I, I messed it up. Um, and what my therapist had me do was a couple days a week, she would have me stick to my diet perfectly. And then one or two nights a week, she would have me go out for ice cream or um, do something off my plan. And then she'd make my husband monitor me to make sure I didn't go binging after that. And it was so uncomfortable because you feel like, dude, I wrecked my diet. What's the point in not having all the other food that I've been craving? Like, I got to get it out of my system right now. Um, but learning to just like have some more balance with my food, it just was a lasting help thing. I don't know. Um, so I would say that over the course of the 18 weeks, that has been a major benefactor in what's gone on. Because over the course of 18 weeks, yeah, I've been hungry and there's been days where I wanted to eat outside my plan and I did. Like, there were days, there were many days that I ate a little bit off my plan. Um, I don't wanna say many, but there was a handful. Um, but in the past, those days would, first of all, the day would be stressful because I would just spend the whole day being like, oh my God, I'm in competition prep and I ate a little bit over my calories and it's really hard. I really want to binge right now because I just want to eat everything in sight because I already messed up. So what's the point? And it's really hard to like not be like that anxiety would just one day of a mistake in my diet would stress me out for another week. Like just thinking, oh God, I wonder if the two servings extra of peanut butter, those 400 calories, I wonder if like I'm gonna be stage ready in 12 weeks, like dumb stuff. Like you don't even realize <laughs> how dumb you think, uh, the dumb things that you think when you're, you know, you have an, a food anxiety or whatever. And so that would be my mindset and um, in the past. But this time around, like there were days where I like ate perfectly all day long. And then at the end of the day, I was like in bed and I couldn't sleep and I was super hungry. So I'd go out and have like a tablespoon of peanut butter, maybe two, and I'd be like, okay, I'm good. I'm going to go back to bed now. Like, did I eat all outside of my plan? Yeah, whatever. I, I just didn't have the anxiety anymore um, that made me want to binge. I would say probably this whole prep, that desire did not come. There were some really tough days during my prep because I've mentioned before that like my whole life blew up outside of just like my diet, um, like family stuff, work stuff, like literally every area of my life that could be a nightmare happened during the course of the last 18 weeks, which sucked and made prep even harder because those issues made me want to like <laughs> eat nachos, I don't know, whatever, off my plan. Um, but the restriction of prep itself didn't cause me anxiety. Um, if I happened to eat a little bit outside of my plan one day. Um, I didn't let that cause me anxiety. I didn't let myself, I, honestly, I would just do it and then I would make myself forget about it. I was like, all right, I know I can either choose to be stressed about this or I can just say it is what it is. And so leading into that, one of the questions I got was how do I not get tired of low carb or I guess maybe just contest prep diet and just binge? And all I can say is, is it's really important to have a healthy relationship with food before you go into competing. I see so many girls who have a normal relationship with food and then they start competing and it messes up their relationship with food. And all I can say is if you're thinking about competing, be aware of this. Be aware that this can mess people up. Because, and I, I don't think competing is bad. I don't think that sticking to a diet is bad. I'm saying that I feel like the restriction that it takes to stay on a diet is very mentally hard on a person who's never had to practice that kind of restriction before. And also like, it really helps being on a flexible diet. Like, I don't know how people do it where for 12, 16, 20 weeks, they are eating just like chicken, fish, asparagus, sweet potato, broccoli, and protein shakes. Like, God bless you, I could not do that. That would be very hard. My whole prep, my coach has never told me what to eat. I've made all my own food choices and that helps too because then at least even if my calories are restricted or my carbs are restricted or whatever, at least I'm choosing the foods that I feel like eating as opposed to someone saying you can't have cereal for 18 weeks, deal with it. You can't have, you know, pizza for 18 weeks, deal with it. Like no, I've been able to fit just about everything that I want in my diet at some point. I was asked, uh, do you wish you had reversed dieted before this prep? Yes. And again, I will talk about that in another video. Another question too is, do you think you'll compete again? Uh, I think so. 
I really, really like this. I like the sport. I like having a reason to work out and a reason to um, diet. I love the structure and stability and discipline that being in prep has given me because I've essentially, except for last November and last December, I've been on a prep diet since July of last year. It's a really long time, but having to stay on that has completely transformed how I see food, how I see um, my body, how I, I fuel myself. Um, it's just changed so much and given me so much structure that I like. Um, what is my biggest fear about competing? I don't know. I guess I'm a little bit afraid to wake up on the morning of the show and not be feel like I'm ready, but I feel like everybody feels that way. Like you could be four pounds and <laughs> feel like I'm not lean enough. I could tighten this up, but it's my first show. I'm going to be forgiving to myself. For me, this was about the process. So the fact that I made it through the process and didn't end up in therapy or divorced or like anything like that, to me, that's a win. Um, I'm super psyched and proud of myself. This has completely changed who I am and I love that. So I'm hanging on to that. That's what is going to keep me happy, um, regardless of my placement, regardless of how I look on, you know, the morning of my show. I've even told my husband, like if some freak thing happens where the day before my show, I like break my leg or I wake up on the morning of my show and I have like a giant guy, like bloated stomach from some weird sodium issue. And like, I can't compete then like, so be it. Like I'm not married to any result. I'm not letting myself be married to even my body right now, the way that I look right now. Like I said, I'm planning on reversing and I want to maintain as much leanness as possible, but I've already decided, like if I gain back five pounds in a healthy way, then so be it. Like, yeah, I love this body. It looks awesome, but I'm not married to it. And I really recommend that if you guys do compete and you're getting closer to your show, don't spend hours looking at yourself in the mirror. Don't spend hours taking loads of pictures and posting them on the internet and showing off your body and getting loads of compliments because it's going to suck when post show you decide to eat a little more regularly or, or, you know, you just decide you don't want to reverse and you just want to eat normal and you don't want to count macros anymore. It's going to suck when you gain 10 pounds and 10 pounds above anyone's stage weight is not a bad weight to be at. I don't care who you are, but it's gonna feel like crap because you're gonna remember how you looked, you're gonna remember all the definition you had in your arms, and it's gonna mess you up. So, um, and that's another fear I had too, is just a, the post-comp rebound that I see so many people go through where, you know, they're in a good place all the way up until their show, and then after their show, they just like lose it. like. They can't handle the water fluctuation and the little bit of weight gain that happens immediately after the show because of what you have, you know, the night of your show and the next day or some people take a week off because they're like, I'm sick of counting things. I'm just going to take a week off and they don't realize that how much damage can happen in a week. Like you can literally gain 20 pounds in a week, literally. And I have seen it happen to people I know um, of them gaining back everything that they lost in 12, 16 or 18 weeks and they gain it all back in a week like it happens so I guess there's a little bit of fear in my mind that like whatever mentally healthy place I'm in right now is going to suddenly just disappear after the show um but I have so much support I have my husband I have my coach I have a couple of girlfriends who have competed or are competing the same week as me um I have some things in place to help me get through those tough days um and honestly where I am now is really truly so different of a place than I was last year when I ended my prep early and didn't compete. I was messed up. I was married to the body I had and was terrified of losing it. And uh, that's just not the case now. I anticipate some weight gain. I anticipate gaining a couple pounds. I anticipate um, a couple weeks after the show that my water levels are going to be weird. So I'll be bloated and stuff like that. Okay. Like, okay. Who cares? Like, I have a husband who loves me. I have a successful job. My training clients aren't going to leave me because now I don't have rippling abs and veins in my shoulders. Like, is that stuff cool? Yeah. Would it be sweet if I could walk around like that all year? Duh, but I can't. So, oh well. Get over it. What am I most excited about? Everything. I am very excited for this show. For as much as last year I used to say, like, I don't want to be on stage. Posing sounds terrible. I don't want to be blah, blah, blah. It sounds like a nightmare. Um, I'm excited about it now. I'm excited to get on stage. I'm excited to have my hair done. This, by the way, is my extensions that I purchased for the show that I paid $35 for and made it myself. They're little 
clip-in hair extensions, and uh, I'll probably make a video about that because you guys keep asking about all my crafty stuff that I've been doing to save some money. I'm excited to do this with my husband. Uh, like, how cool is it that my husband is competing with me on my show dates, both of our first show, first shows. Um, so I'm psyched about that. I'm excited to see. He's lost like 25 pounds or something. He looks sweet. He's like more conditioned than me and it kind of sucks, but it's also kind of awesome. So I'm excited for that. I really try to be very open on my Instagram account, on my social medias and let you guys know when I'm struggling, let you know when things are hard. And I don't want this video to sound like prep was easy. It was awesome. I'm going to go on stage. Everything's great. It has been very hard for me. I, like I've mentioned, I had a lot of personal stuff going on that I've not talked about particulars of those situations just to protect the privacy of people I know, people I'm affiliated with, um, and I'm, I'm just not one to share anybody else's business or gossip. It's just not okay to me. Um, so I've kept a lot of my exact struggles very private. Um, but let me just tell you, the probably the worst days of my life, like the top five worst days of my entire life have been within these eight, last 18 weeks for sure. Um, and I don't mean like, oh, mentally I had a bad day, I had a mental breakdown, or I felt so fat today and it just messed with me all day long and today was awful. Like, no, like real life crap happening to me and my family that literally was the worst thing I could think of at that time. And especially in the beginning of prep, a lot of stuff just like one thing after another that just kept snowballing that literally just made me feel like, how is this my life? This is not fair. Um, and But getting through that while being on prep and not messing up my prep and like, I don't know, like you can do it. You just have to dig deep. You gotta dig deep. You gotta believe in yourself. You gotta find the support of people who can carry you when you're being, you know, weak. And if you don't have a person like that, like I'll be that person. I know I'm making a big statement by saying that to my 600 plus YouTube followers and my whatever amount of Instagram followers I have. Um, you know, I'm not gonna babysit you emotionally, but um, you know, I'm here to talk. Uh, I, I've been through a really crappy prep and I've been through um, a physically taxing prep, but was mentally better, which was the one I'm in now. I guess that's really gonna have to wrap it up because I currently have 30 minutes of footage my husband's gonna have to uh, snip through. So, thank you guys for watching. Bye.